Hi, Awatera team. This is Erin from Amara. I met some members of your team last week and they asked if I could make a short video just going through some of the features of an, a collaboration team that I demoed for them last week. So I'll get right into it. If you have any further questions about these team features or anything uh, about Amara or our solutions, happy to answer them. So I, I dove right into the team settings because this is really the most powerful features and the most desirable features in this team are the workflow settings. And what that means is we can enable these extra workflow steps to really control the quality of our subtitles that we're creating on the team. The, the, the workflow requests are, of course, subtitle. That is given when you add a video to the team, it automatically creates um, a transcription request for that video, transcription of the original language of that video. But I have enabled additional steps in my workflow. Uh, I could enable both review and approve. In this team, I have enabled only approve and I have set it so that only team members with the role of manager are able to take on these approval requests. And what all of this means is we have one contributor on our team, or we have contributors on our team who, um, let's say, perform the transcription request. They endorse that transcription. And before it can be, the subtitles can be considered to be complete, someone else on the team has to take on the approval request for that language. They, um, they, they take on the approval request, they go into the editor, and from there, they either um, complete the approval, publish the, the subtitles, or they send it back to the original transcriptionist if it needs more work. So we'll see all of that in action in a minute, but really these are, this is at the core. Workflows are at the core of how teams like yours would use this type of team. Uh, you also optionally can enable due dates, assignment time limits. I've done that on this team so you can see what it looks like, how, how you're able to tell how much time is left and um, and and um, how much time you have left and if uh, if they're what the due date is. If you enable uh, time limits, you can set separate time limits for each step in the workflow. We've got in this team two weeks or 14 days for the subtitler to finish and five days for the approver to finish. Again, this just helps keep your subtitles and translations moving through so that they're getting completed in a, a timely fashion. What to do um, if, if the assignment expires, basically it unassigns from um, the request from that team member and opens it up again for anyone else on the team. Anytime that happens, so for example, let's say your subtitler wasn't able to finish within the 14 day period and, and, um, and it um, basically got unassigned from them, it opens back up to the rest of the team members. <clears throat> that same subtitler can take it on again, but really the most important thing to note here is that none of that work is lost. Any work that that subtitler did when they had the assignment assigned to them is still there, still reflecting is their name. We don't lose that just because it gets unassigned from them. Um, if another member of the team picks it up, takes on the task and finishes it to completion, it, it just, they pick, off exact, pick up exactly where that person left off. So here is another really um, robust uh, setting in this type of team. So I have this team set to automatically create requests when I add a video to the team. So let's just use English as an example. I've added an, a, a video to the team 
and English is the original language, it will automatically create that transcription request for English for me. So one less manual step that I need to do. Um, and also I have instructed it to automatically create these subtitle requests when the English language subtitles are complete. So again, less manual steps. I already know that I always want to have Spanish, Arabic, and Swedish for this team translation requests to be created for each video. And so I can, and even if I set these advanced workflow settings here, I can always create requests manually as well. But this is doing it automatically for me. Again, less manual work that I have to do. So that those are the workflows. Um, there are a couple of other, we won't, I didn't go through all team features. We, we can certainly talk about more of those, but really the, the two others are the subtitle editor. So here's where you can customize how the subtitle editor behaves in terms of uh, how many maximum characters per second or per line or subtitle lines. And, and what that means is if your, if your um, team members are in the editor creating subtitles and they exceed the 42 character limit, suggested limit per line, they'll get a warning message in the editor, a little exclamation mark telling them exactly what the issue might be. So those are their standard, sort of industry standard subtitling guidelines already built into the editor. And, um, but you can customize them and we'll see where you see the list of all of those. You can review them at any time when you're in the editor. If you customize them here, they will be customized for every language, or you can specify by certain languages. Okay, let's say on this team, we've heard from our French translators that 42 characters per line is just not enough there. It's taking them really long time to create the translations because it's taking, it takes just more French characters when they are, you know, creating the, the French translation. So in this team, we have uh, bump that up, CPL up to 47 or 55, whatever number it is that's going to help your translators have the best experience when creating the translations in the editor. Uh, so, um, all right, we will we will definitely see those warning messages. I'll show you uh, what those look like. And finally, integrations. So the teams can be integrated with video hosting sites like YouTube, Vimeo, Kaltura, Brightcove. So if you're doing a particular project for a client and let's say they have a Bright Cove account, you can integrate it with this channel. Um, and then when you add their videos to your, to with this, integrate with this team, sorry. And when you add your videos to their videos to the team and complete their subtitles, then they're automatically sent to their Bright Cove videos. There's no downloading, there's no uploading. That's the beauty of integrations. They, all of the integrations that are available have different settings, not all of them. Um, are the same. For example, YouTube is pretty robust. Um, you can you can have it um, import um, videos uh, when new videos are added to the team. You can have it import those automatically. Export subtitles from Amara to YouTube. That's the automatic syncing and exporting of subtitles. That's really a great feature. Um, you can import existing subtitles if they're there, even automatic captions if they're visible on YouTube. So um, YouTube has the most kind of robust handshake back and forth between Amara and the site, but um, you do also have those other options. And if you're client with a Bright Cove account, let's say, for example, um, if they add it, if you integrated their Bright Cove account with this team and you are working on any other videos that have nothing to do with that client or that Bright Cove account, it doesn't impact it at all. It doesn't send anything to that Bright Cove account that doesn't belong there and vice versa. No one else can see anything on that Bright Cove account. Only this is a private team. So only the team members that you have invited to the team can see the team, see the team videos, anything like that. And, and um, okay, 
So um, those were some of the best team setting features. Um, when we were talking about workflows, um, I was calling them requests, and that's really what they are. So on the request page, you can see everything that's going on with the team videos. I've got some unassigned transcription requests. I've got some that are assigned already to team members. <clears throat> I can edit these requests. <clears throat> Pardon me. From this page, I can also edit um, both steps in the request. So for example, I can, I know that there is both um, a subtitle request and an approve request uh, uh, workflow settings set on this team. So I can set both the transcriber here and the reviewer in one step. I don't have to wait um, for the, for the <clears throat> transcriber to finish. I can go ahead and set the approval, <clears throat> the approver, and the transcriber in one set, or you them separately when the transcriber is finished, however your team wants to manage it. Uh, let's take a look at the dashboard. So now you can see the, what your team members would see, envisioning it for um, Awatera for like your linguists would be on the team. This is what they'd see. These are assignments that are assigned to me right now. You can see uh, because the team has due dates and time limits set, I've got a translation request assigned to me and a transcription request. Um, I was going to, I was hopefully assigning an approval to myself as well uh, so that you could see how that looks um, but we'll do that in one moment i won't um i won't get into the transcription i more so want to get into the translation because this editor is exactly the same whether you're making a transcription of the original language or doing it is uh, when you are doing a translation, it brings over all of the synced timing from the original language. So um, I quickly went through the editor with the other members of your team when we had a demo. Here are those warning messages. Um, uh, and then I can, let's say, break this up. What I did was do shift and enter to bring that line down um, to a second line in the subtitled cell that took care of uh, the warning message. These warning messages are actually about reading rates, which I can, um, it will make more sense if I view the timeline. And that way I can see, oh, here's that cell. I can even see the orange handles around the cell. Something is wrong with the reading rate. It's too short in this case. It's not on the screen long enough. So we can correct that during the next phase here, the sync timing phase, or I can manually do it on my timeline. The nice part about um, being a translator is you don't have to do a lot of sync work because all the timings have come over from the original cells. You probably have to do some because it's, we, as I'm even typing here in Spanish, there's less characters or more characters or <laughs> anything like that. Um, pressing, ent pressing enter would just move you to the next cell. So type what you hear. You're just press pressing the tab key to make the video play and typing what you hear. And then I'm, pre I'm doing shift and enter to create a second line in a cell. Also, you can, um, you can split a cell by doing control and enter or I can merge cells. If I hover my cursor around the bottom left corner of a cell, then these uh, little additional menu items appear and I'm gonna uh, just go ahead and merge those two cells again. Always um, saving, saving your work and you can resume editing or exit. Okay, so that was how, what a translator sees when they have taken on a translation request because the English for that video has already been transcribed and endorsed by a, a team member and approved and endorsed by a team member. So let's say um, I want to take on this approve, approval step. Someone else on the team 
has made the transcription and I can take on the approval. Um, if this was assigned from the requests page, I would have seen it there on my dashboard, but I wanted to show you what the difference looks like when you're in here as a reviewer or an approver. I can either fully endorse it and then these subtitles will be considered complete or I can send it back. Um, so if, if I send it back because it needs more work, I saw, you know, in your approvers or reviewers can do as much editing in here as they want. If they really just see one little, you know, typo as they watch the video through, or they're just eyeballing it to make sure that there's, you know, enough subtitle cells that match up to the video length, you know, again, they can edit in in here they can make edits and then endorse it or they can send it back if there's just too many too many changes that need to be made and not happy with the transcriptionist's work or translator's work and again approvals will be the same for whether it's approval of a translation or approval of a transcription um okay then that was i think that was it um we, we just briefly i do want to talk about member roles um show you how um some of these lang um some of these roles can help you a contributor is someone who has basically the least rights on the team they can just come onto the team and take on translation and transcription requests. Um, a language manager is a, just like a step up from a contributor. So what this team member can do is when they come on the team, they can take on translation and transcription tasks, but they can also, they have access to the requests page and they are only able to see the requests for the language they've been specified manager of so in this case when marta is on the team and she goes to the request page she sees all of the spanish requests for all the videos on the team and she is able to assign those requests to other team members so the language manager role is a really helpful one again for helping you keep your work flowing through the team and getting those subtitles and translations completed and then um, you know having some of team members able to help you get that done okay i think um, that was it i hope that was really helpful um, again my name is erin it's just erin at amara.org if you have any questions or want would like to see a, a demo um, yourselves okay thanks so much bye